Right, so at the beginning of the video, that was some scenes of my new oxypropane gas torch set. Um, I bought a lightweight set off of eBay with this um, torch here. It's a really excellent kit and I'm going to be using it for tool making in the workshop. And I've um, been on Banggood and um, got one of these little um, micro torches. Uh, you can use these with um, oxyacetylene or oxypropane. And this is the um, box it came in. This is a copy of the USA made Smith's Little Torch. Um, you can get on eBay. They're about 200 odd pounds to buy. But this one here is very low cost if you have a look on the site. I'll put a link below for this one. And as far as I can see, I reckon it's a really good copy. I can't see the difference um, when looking online. I haven't actually held a um, Smith's Little Torch from the USA, but like I say, this looks like a very good copy. And it comes with um, everything that you'd actually get with the um, American-made torch. You have um, five different nozzles and a good length of hose with that. And I've set mine up and used it. It produces a very fine flame and I'll show you that later. It's a really excellent little torch for jewellery making or whatever, or small soldering jobs. The flame temperature is um, really high. Um, I forget exactly what it was um, in the book, but I think it's exactly the same as the um, American made torch. The only problem with this torch, if you get one from China, is that the fittings on the um, uh, ends, the uh, meant to be 3 8 BSP, to fit the um, regulator on your uh, gas bottle or whatever, they've put the wrong thread in these, either the wrong pitch or something's wrong with it. Um, when you try and screw them on, they're too tight to actually go on the um, regulator and therefore um, you have to do something about that. Now I've heard people um, buying uh, screw taps to um, chase out the thread or um, redo the thread in them. I found the easiest way is to actually buy a couple of um, 3 8 BSP tail ends like this on eBay. So they come with the correct uh, fitting nut obviously. And then I make the part up that goes inside um, the tail end. You can't actually use the one that comes with this um, uh, set or with these actual 3 8 BSP ones because you can't actually turn down this one. It would be too thin or non-existent by the time you've turned that brass piece down. So you have to actually make a new um, tail end of a piece of, um, I think it's 16 millimeter diameter brass bar. And it's very easy to do so because you just copy this end here as exact as you can within a couple of thou and then drill through with a smaller diameter drill and make this tail end here smaller diameter to be able to fit the hose nice and tightly. And that's exactly what I've done here. Then cut the old ends off. Remember which one um, goes on where. The left hand thread which is marked on the hexagon here goes on the red hose and that's the Chinese one. They've got the same markings. And then I burn the end of the cloth there just to melt it a little bit so it doesn't come apart at all and put a five to seven millimeter gas hose ear clip on. If you don't know what they are, an ear clip is one of these proper fittings to actually um, fit on the gas hose. Never use Jubilee clips or whatever on um, oxygen or propane or any gas fitting. Use the proper clips. So I put that one on the hose push the new tail end in and the easiest way to do that is put it down on the table and push it on. You may need to wet the tail end a bit and just push it on and then pull the ear clip down over the tail end there and squash the sides in with a vise 
or the proper tool if you have one. I always use a vise. And that's a proper fitting then, just as good as new and perfectly safe. So just remember to actually copy the one that you buy with the large nut off of eBay. Um, these ones, if you put these in, um, the large ones, they'll just fall straight through. So don't copy the Chinese ones, they only fit the nuts that come with it. And they're no good anyway. And also, uh, like I said, um, there's a close-up of the um, proper fitting. And you can see that it's been burned. I do that with the cigarette lighter. Just burn the end of the cloth slightly so it melts it a little bit and stops it from fraying. So now I'll show you in the workshop on the Chinese mini lathe how to make the inner tail end part for the new nuts. Right, so I've got my 16mm piece of brass up in the Chinese mini lathe chuck and the first tool I'm going to be using is the DCMT 070204 insert tool. So I'll face this one off first. Next I'm going to turn this largest diameter here, which is about 560 thou, to clear this length. And you can see there that I've turned the full length of the component that I'm going to be making. Um, it doesn't matter because that's the largest diameter. And on the last cut I used the power feed to get a good finish. Next I turn this front diameter to the shoulder which is about 7mm.
So there you saw me drilling right the way through with a 2.5 millimeter drill and I actually drilled beyond the flutes of the drill. You can only do that if you clear the swarf regularly. And now I know that that's the full length of the component or beyond the full length of the component. So I don't have to turn around and drill from the other end. So now I'm going to use a small file to put the radius on the end, like on the component here. It's perfectly alright to use a file on the lathe as long as you have a good solid handle that won't come off and that you always approach the work up the file, never put the end of the file on the work. And I use the uh, Chinese mini lathe guard at the back there for a rest so I can actually do the radius like this. And then I give it a bit of a polish with some emery and again I rest on the uh, lathe bed with my other hand and just polish round like that, being careful not to touch the um, diameter, the largest diameter that I've already turned. So now I can part that one off to length using one of these small part off tools or groove tools. So now I just put a countersink in just to clean up that edge there. And put it in the jaws holding on this diameter here. And I'll just lightly grip that at first. And then I use my interchangeable MT2 live center with this end in it. Then I turn this back diameter here, which is about 468 thou, and leave a shoulder about 2mm thick.
And now I turn down the tail end part for the hose or the gas pipe to fit. And this is my rough drawing from when I made it last. So now I've turned this diameter down to 0.200 thou and now I'm going to plunge in about um, 6 millimetre from the end to take it down to 0.150 thou and leave a larger diameter on the end so that when the hose clip goes round it will actually lock it onto the um, pipe and it can't come off. And now I use my HSS tool just to clean up the angle. And then just deburr the end with a piece of emery.
and that's the component finished. Here's the bore nut, the 3 8 BSP nut, and the component that I've just made. Drop that down in, put the gas clip onto the hose. Um, you can wet the end here a little bit, push the hose pipe on, and then put the clip down over and do both sides in the vise or with the special tool to lock that ear clip up and lock it onto the tail end here and it can't pull off because of the larger diameter at the end there And you can see there what a brilliant torch this is, how quick it gets that 6mm bolt, red hot in a few seconds. So it's absolutely excellent for all types of small brazing jobs, uh, particularly in places where um, it's hard to get to, and also for brazing on jewellery or whatever. It's a brilliant piece of care.